In today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be generating this nice, viscous, gloopy liquid, but we're going to be using three different emitters, and we're going to give each emitter its own viscosity value. And we can do this by data mapping. We can even animate that data mapping should we wish. So let's jump into cinema and we'll get started. In our scene, we have three X particles emitters and they are attached to this rotating spline object because they've all got look and align to spline tag on and they are being aligned to this animated circle spline. So that's giving us this look. In our emitter, um, they are all in spherical mode, a radius of 7.5 and in the emission, uh, emission tab, we've got it set to regular um, we're emitting on frame 3 to 180, zero speed, radius, a particle radius of 0.7. And we've got a gravity in the scene, which is set to the default, but with a bit of variation added. And we've got also a default nexus fluids, which we're going to switch on in a minute. Um, they are colliding with our bust object, uh, which you can find in the Cinema 4D asset browser. And that has a collider tag on, as does the plane, which is acting as our floor. OK, so what we want to do is activate our Nexus fluids. Now, this is in the default settings completely in SPH mode. Let's hit play. And there we have got that kind of splashy looking sim, which is not quite what we want. So what we're going to do is add some really cool viscosity this uh, to this using Nexus constraints. Just before we add that, I'm going to hold Control and hit D to bring up my project settings. These are the Cinema 4D project settings here, and there is an X Particles tab with the X Particles options. And in here, um, we have the subframe steps. By default, this is on one. I've increased this to two, and that's just to make sure that our gravity is going to be nice and accurate. We've got strong acceleration gravity force to make sure that that is an accurate solve without stepping. We've increased the subframe steps. So now we're going to get this uh, gloopy viscosity going on. So let's click on Nexus Constraints, and we're going to bring in a viscosity layer. And we are going to say that the connection limit is going to be eight. So one particle can connect with up to eight others with a springy viscosity constraint, but only if they are within 20 centimeters of each other. And they will have a stiffness, a viscosity stiffness, let's say, of 40 percent. And I'm just going to increase the iterations, which increases the accuracy. This also increases the strength of this constraint. Um, so 40% stiffness on two iterations is going to be a lot gloopier than 40% stiffness on one iteration. We'll leave it on two. Let's hit play. And yeah, look, so now we're getting this really nice gloopy um, simulation. That's looking good. All right. So one thing I want to do before we start uh, data mapping this so we get different levels of viscosity per emitter, I just want to draw these particles onto the surface a bit. They're getting flung off a little bit. So we're going to do that with another modifier. Let's bring in an attract. The attract will attract particles to this target, to the center of the modifier. So I'm going to put it somewhere like that. I'm going to leave it in velocity mode. I'm going to put the force up to about 50. We don't want any acceleration. The gravity is doing all of the accelerating for us, so that can be on zero. And the speed limit, we don't want any limiting going on either. So let's just put that on a massive amount so there's no limit. So now these particles are going to fall with the gravity, but they're going to, going to be attracted to the center point of this attractor, which means that they're really going to start kind of hugging the side of that model as they come down. Yeah, look, we can see that happening. So once we've got that effect happening, we then want this attraction force to wane off because we want them to be able to just fall down with gravity. We don't want them always coming towards here. So let's just limit it with a fall off. We'll go to the fields tab, add a linear field. We'll do it on plus Y and let's just kind of move that up to something like that. Something like that looks good. So what this is saying is when the particles are here, they get full attraction force. And then when they start entering the fall off, the attraction force reduces and reduces and reduces until they come out of it. No attraction force. They can just fall to the ground. OK, and that's going to work well for us. But we're getting it pulling it into the surface of the model, which is what we wanted.
Okay, that's looking good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give each emitter different viscosity values so we can mix different um, levels of gloopiness in these fluids. And we're going to do that with groups and with data mapping. So let's get the groups sorted first. We're going to go to emitter 1, groups, create add group. We're going to go to emitter 2, groups, create add groups. Emitter 3, groups, create add groups. So now what's happening is all particles from emitter 1 are going into group 1. Emitter 2 go into group 2. Emitter 3 go into group 3. Okay. So now in our constraints, let's go to the object tab, we can map this stiffness value to the group. So particles in group 3 get all of this stiffness. Particles in group 2 get less of this stiffness and so on. So let's go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a group map. We are going to set the category, it's viscosity constraints we're mapping. The parameter is that stiffness amount. And now we need to set the range. Now the groups go from 1 to 3. So it needs to be the minimum group is 1, maximum is 3. And that has mapped groups 1 to 3 along this x-axis. Group 1's here, group 2's exactly 0.5, and group 3 is on 1. And then on the y-axis is that stiffness value. So this is saying that particles in group 1 have zero stiffness, particles in group 2 have 50% stiffness, particles in group 3 have all of the stiffness that we've set. So let's just do it on the defaults and see if that's true. Yep, so look, the pink ones have no stiffness and they're just solving like that splashy fluid. The green ones have got slightly more stiffness. And then the orange ones have got the full amount of that stiffness. So, yep, that is working. That's cool. What I want to do is just give a little bit of stiffness to these ones in particle group 1, though. So let's just raise this. We'll raise the Y position up to maybe 0 0.06, just so they've got a bit of stiffness in there. And let's try that again. Yeah, so like just putting a bit of stiffness has just got that under control and kind of bound them together a bit. Okay, that's looking really cool. So that's just quickly how we can data map those values. So what I'll do, let's get this caching. Uh, we'll go to Insidium, X particles, cache. I'll start caching this. I'll come back to you when that cache is finished and we'll play it through and have a look at the results. Here we are then. That cache took uh, just under eight minutes to complete 300 frames. And there, that's looking really cool, isn't it? We've got our three different fluid types with different levels of viscosity, really gloopy orange ones, mid gloopiness in the green and pretty splashy in the pink. And that is how we can use groups and data mapping to get these different looks. And I'm very pleased with that effect. Looks pretty cool.